Hey guys, this is Gamer Cow. We are playing the Pokemon Trading Card Game 2. And, well, last time we did stuff with Great Rocket 2 and Arrival. And this time I'm going to start by going in. No Water Club thing because I apparently sped it up instead. That was kind of dumb. And then we capture screens because I forget once again that my buttons are set, whatever. Um, I did play three matches in the middle of this so that I could get a couple of cards that I was after. Uh, I actually only did one as a test of this deck, but whatever. Going back with the fire fighting thing, focusing much more on the fighting side because, well, I kind of want to. Because uh, we got Dark Dog Trio, means I've got two different types of Dog Trio, so I can use those. Uh, going with the Machamp line again, I got a Hitmonchan when I played a Matthew again, because I was testing my, you know, testing this deck out. And I picked up one more Dragonair so that I could use Stratini Dragonair Dragonite, because I figured that would be cool. Because, you know, it's a, it's a Dragonite. It's, it's an awesome Pokemon. I got one more card which I want to show off as well, because I had to get another Dratini too, and that was in a separate pack. So the card I got was this. It is a... I think it's a Vending Machine Mewtwo. I'm hoping that's what it is, but it's probably the best Mewtwo card of this game, actually. Although the Energy Absorption one is nice too, but I think this one's a bit more damaging. Uh, very good against Psychics as well, so if you're using a Psychic deck, consider test uh, teching one of these in, in case you come across other Psychics. And then it does 50 for free, so it is a bit slow if you're not against other Psychic decks, but still, 80 HP is the highest of any Mewtwo card, and 2 retreat cost is not terrible. So there you go. So now I've got to cancel this again, and because I'm restricted by 10 character names, this is about the best I could really come up with. I'm pretty sure I used that in uh, the first game, but there's not much I can do. So there you go. That is how we're set up. And here in the Water Club, we do indeed find a Makuni Strange. We haven't met him yet, actually. I reckon, I reckon we can meet him soon-ish, I hope. Anyway, Water Club Master has been in prison. No, you'll you'll see her again. Don't worry. And yes, stuff has been stolen. Imprisonment. Blah. You, Joshua, you are one of the people who fought us in the first place. Yeah. Escaping stuff. Um, Great Rocket Number Three has captured everyone, of course. So yeah, we've got to we've got to help. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and do that. Even though he is using a water deck and I have some fire types, I think I'll be okay because I focus much more on the fighting aspect. I have a lot of... a big variety of weaknesses in this deck actually. It's maybe not the best of things, but it's not bad. I mean, I've got grass, I've got psychic, I've got water, and I have got... Actually, nothing else because Dratini's not weak against anything, but I have psychic resistance too, so that's good. Anyway, gonna send out Diglett first because it's got no retreat cost, so if I find that it's not a favorable matchup, I will just go ahead and switch back out. And it's up against a Magikarp, so it's probably not the worst of matchups, but at the same time, if I could get a plus power, that would really help then I could just knock it out, but of course I can't, so too bad. I could just energy removal it, and that shows he's got another magic card. Wow, okay. Um, huh, I wasn't actually expecting that, so hey, let's just dig under. I'm just going to attack the active one so that I can two-hit kill it. There's no point in not two-hit killing it, <laughs> I suppose. And Flail does some damage. whoop de doo Hitmonchan! Nice to see you. Now we're going to kick some ass with you because you're awesome and that's that's what we like to do. So yep, it does exactly the same as it used to. It is quite possibly the third best card of this game, maybe. I don't know if it's third or fourth. It depends on your take of Wigglytuff, to be honest. And so that happens, it's a magic up. What do you honestly expect from it? We've got Jatini, it does not matter at this point. 
in the slightest, because basically, Hitmonchan's gonna wreck face, as it always does, it's what it's good at. So yeah, you do all of the flailing that you want, that's as much damage as a Magikarp is ever going to pull. I have three energy cards, I'm going to overkill, special punch your face, because that's exactly what I do. And apparently screen catcher because I pressed the wrong button, but that's fine. Who really cares anyway, we just beat up Joshua for no reason using fighting types because that's how it goes. And we get more premier packs, which is definitely good. What have we got? We've got another Jugon, wow. I swear to god I have never had this many Jugon in Command of these things, it's ridiculous. Awesome, but ridiculous. What else are we going to get though, because we get two packs from him for some reason. We get a Charizard! Wow, okay. Uh, Charizard does exactly the same as it always does, it just looks prettier whilst it does it. And... well, Charizard's not a terrible card. Uh, not very good about double colorless, I think, but not... It's still not the worst card I could have pulled. I'm sort of still disappointed that I don't have any Rapidash though. I'm using the two Dark Rapidash that I got, but they're basically just the same as Ponyta, so I'd much rather have the uh, actual Rapidash, because that's a lot better. But oh well. So yeah, we are going up here and finding out that you are held holding everyone captive, which is sort of annoying. Because look at them, they're just there in standing water. <laughs> Before I could catch a little whelp. <laughs> he sounds old. Seriously old. Uh, well, let's go ahead and try and beat him. I can't remember exactly what he uses, but he's got a lightning symbol, so he's probably going to use lightning types. Which is good, because I have Diglett, so if he uses lightning, then I might have a slight advantage. Of course, he could just use completely different types, and of course I don't have a uh, fighting energy to use on my fighting type. That's just like completely logical sense right there. And I do get ahead, so I can at least go first. And he's got that magma. That magma... Oh Jesus, wow. Uh, a couple of things to show off here. He must be the grass and fire one then or something. Basically this magma is a cross between the two magmas that you see before. It's um... It's got the same HP as the original Magma, but it's got much quicker attacks. So Fire Punch for 20, Smog for 20 plus Poison, which is the same as the Fossil Magma, but it's much faster and more powerful. I think this is the best Magma, to be honest. Uh, this Charmander is uh, pretty damaging, because it does 30 for 2. Uh, same general idea as that Seal and one of the Pikachus. And then you've got this Moltres, which is nasty, to say the least. Um, potentially very dangerous attack there if you're up against water, but really it's not that useful. But 50 for 4, uh, it's underpowered, but it's the sheer fact of it's a basic Pokemon that's got no weakness, and 80 HP makes it fairly dangerous. It's also got a fighting resistance, which means most of my cards are going to do jack shit against it. I can't really do anything with this hand whatsoever, and I'm going to die in two attacks, so I don't have any choice but to Professor Oak, even though that gets rid of a lot of cards from my hand. I had no choice whatsoever. I probably should have used a plus power though, in retrospect, but I didn't know if I was going to get energy, so... I don't know. Uh, let's switch out, actually, because I would rather keep this thing at full health. Or do I want to switch out? No, I think I want to attack with it, because I don't have the plus power anymore. I think I want to get that 10 damage off. Because that way I can go for the kill with Slash in a couple of turns. I do take a bit of damage first, which is not good. Considering I'm so fragile, that's really not the best of ideas, but at the same time, Ponyta, especially when it evolves, can take... You know, I, I can't evolve with Diglett into Dark Rapidash, what the hell are you doing, cow? Seriously, <laughs> that's just dumb. But whatever, I can evolve Diglett as well, just to make sure it doesn't get Gust of Winded, 
and I should be able to KO this thing fairly quickly. Hopefully. Hey, Hitmonchan, I'm going to keep you in hand at the moment, because if I get enough of fighting energy, then I'm totally going to be able to Earthquake, and I don't want to kill my Hitmonchan. I will want to Earthquake, though, because otherwise I'm not going to get very much damage on this Moltres, which is very scary. But if I can... Oh, that Tangler is going to be annoying. That Tangler does exactly the same as Tanglers did in the original game, so there's no point in really showing that off. But I'm only going to be able to do 10 damage a turn here unless I can get Earthquake going. So that gives him plenty of time to stall, which is not good. I really need another fighting energy, and I'm not getting one whatsoever, so nuts to you, game. So the reason I'm not putting more Pokemon down is because Earthquake will do 10 damage to all of my bench, and I'm kind of going to be relying on that. However, with the advent of another Professor Oak, I think I'm just going to play my stuff down. Because I'm very likely to get a Fighting Energy off of this, and that is just something which I really need to do. Yeah, there we go. Oh, if I played the plus power, I would do 20 to my bench, which is terrible, but... At the same time, what I can do is I can Gust of Wind out to this Tangler. It's got 50 HP, so I can use my Gust of Wind stuff with plus power, get 50 damage off, and one hit kill it before it gets a super effective hit on my Dugtrio. Because that would be very, very bad. Hey, another Gust of Wind. Cool, so I could switch out stuff again. Potentially very good. I've also got my own switch, which is nice. Uh, who to charge up? Let's go ahead and put him on Chan in charge mode, I suppose. It's always useful. And that just means I slash again. I wasn't going to Earthquake twice against this thing anyway, because there's no point. It's not charged up enough to do any sort of damage. That, on the other hand, ooh. You know what, I'm totally getting rid of that threat before it starts. Finding energy on Dogtrio, Gust of Wind... This is the good thing about having high damage attacks like this, is that now I can Earthquake for the 70. It's going to damage my own bench as well, but getting the kill on that pincer before it does anything is a huge boon. And yeah, that's, that's something I definitely like. Because why wouldn't you like that? Also, I kind of probably accidentally pressed the speed up button there, but god dang it, stop it with the grass types! I don't like it when you've got lots of grass types up. Uh, Bill, what are you going to give me? You're going to give me Dark Dog Trio. I have no use for Dark Dog Trio whatsoever. But you know what? I have use for Trader, so let's trade away that. Get myself a Dragonair, so that I don't kill my own Dratini. And I will put that down on you. I think that's about all I need to do with that. So one more slash and then I can Earthquake for 40 and get the kill. Ooh, that's, that's not nice. Star Charmeleon's not very good unless it's got fire energy on it, however. So really it's not an issue. It can do 20 damage, it's fine, it's only got 50 HP, unlike the massive 80 of the original, so it's really underpowered in comparison. And Fireball, it's another one of those, if Tails it does nothing attacks, however if you get Head you still have to discard a Fire Energy. Huge damage, especially for a stage 1 Pokemon, but not worth it really, it's not that good. Anyway, Dragonair is up, and I'm going to Earthquake for 40. Because of resistance, it cuts it by 30, but because it's such a high power attack, you can punch straight through it, so that's fine. And then I can get another Fighting Energy, that's excellent, actually. Because if I look at this right, what could I do with that? I could switch out which is an option, or I can just tank the stuff. I'm going to kill my own bench at this rate, but they're fairly tanky, they can take the hits. And really, they don't need to take too many more, because I can fairly quickly kill this off with uh, 
earthquakes, because I only need two more prizes, so if I earthquake enough, then I'm just going to be able to win this despite hitting my bench. Which is obviously not ideal, but when I'm doing one-hit kills on everything, I don't think it matters too much that I'm hurting my bench like this. Unless, of course, he's got Gust of Wind. Gust of Wind, yeah, you can switch out to that and you can get the kill. That's not a big deal, because that's his only prize that he's taken, and I can just one-shot him with Earthquake, so... Yeah, your, your valid attempt was valid, but Earthquake is just going to destroy you anyway. However, that does very adequately show the big disadvantage of using Earthquake because Gust of Wind and spread damage as a whole will just rip you to shreds if you're not careful. But really, the whole point of using Earthquake there was as a disruptive tool, because that kind of stopped him from doing most of what he wanted to do, because I was killing everything. So yeah, we get to take booster packs, and obviously one of them is a rocket pack, and we get ourselves Devolution Spray. Not really that useful, to be honest. It's the same as it was before. So, yeah, you discard the evolution and stuff. Uh, Dark Machoke, I guess I could show that off. It's kind of crap. 60 HP is sort of alright. It's not that good, but it's... Yeah, fair enough. And then its attacks both do not that good damage for its energy. And basically, it's either you get to choose what the opponent brings out and then do 20 damage to it, or they get to choose what it brings out, and you do 30 before switching. In theory it's okay, but it takes so many energy and it just doesn't, it doesn't have anything going for it, it's not a good card. But we do get potion energy, I can show that off because that's basically the same as full heal energy, but you get a damage counter removed, which sometimes 10 damage makes the difference. But I prefer full heal energy because then full heal is really good. And we get Lost Isle as well, which gives us Computer Search. Oh god, yes, Computer Search. That is freaking awesome. We all know what this does. It's pretty much one of the most powerful trainers of the game. And we also get this, which is a somewhat usable Porygon. It's got no retreat cost, it's actually got a damaging attack, which is something, and it still keeps conversion too, so yeah, it's sort of usable. But it only has 40 HP, so it's still meh at best, but it's better than the other one, so that's a start, right? So yeah, here goes Grrr, shaking the screen. And apparently he's got the Fire Club under control as well, so we're going to have to go to the Fire Club to finish him off. But yeah, we are in the presence of the girls of this club, I suppose. And yeah, we get a deck to play him, even though we've only just, we've beaten him with a deck already, we still get a deck to play him with. But we get one of my favourite coins of this game for this whole journey, the Starmie coin. Water coin, whatever, it's a starmy, fine, it, that, that's all it needs. But yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites, because it looks, it's one of the ones that looks the best. I mean, I know it's just a basic starmy, yeah, but stars are cool, and I, I, it just looks awesome. So yes, we will indeed go ahead and liberate the fire club fairly shortly. But first off, uh, do I want to change thing? I don't know, but we'll see what deck it is. It's a water and fire deck, which is quite interesting. I can completely understand why that would be the case, but let's see, it's got that cool Ninetales, it's got the better Arcanine. As you can see, this Arcanine is a rare in this game, so once again, it's harder to get than it was before. And it's probably still the best Arcanine, even though it's still not that good. We get a Rapidash, which is nice. I was looking for those in the Premier Packs, but didn't get one. Uh, Squirtle Water Tool. I actually picked up one of these and didn't show it before, but it's a very basic thing. 10, 20 damage. It's it's alright. And then Water Tool, 10 damage plus Paralysis, or 30. For a dedicated water deck, it's cheaper to use than the other one, but at the same time, I still think the other one is generally better but this one can use cheaper attacks. The problem with it is, like the Ivysaur, it has two retreat costs instead of one, which is 
pretty crappy, actually. So it's it's hit and miss, but it works quite well when you don't have a whole lot of energy, I guess. And of course we get a Gyarados as well, which is fine. Uh, Gyarados is quite cool. Not the best thing ever because Magikarp is terrible, but it does a lot of damage, so there is that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got one trader, which is good. We get another bill, which is amazing, because now I've got three, which is more than I had before. And yeah, that's it's a cool concept, but I think I'm going to stick with the deck which I had. I'm just going to dismantle this one and change around some of the cards in here. Because I kind of do. I only have three Professor Oak in here at the moment because I found that it was just excessive having four. I was always getting more Oaks than I could like discard and stuff, so it sort of sucked. But hey, that's what happens when you have a lot of crap to deal with, I guess. I don't know. I would like to put in this Rapidash instead of a Dark One though, because I prefer normal Rapidash. I just think it's much better. And I need to start taking out some of these, so let's take out that, take out Dark Dog Trio because I quite like the regular one, and that would do perfectly fine. So now we've got 12 basics, it's still enough, we've got a good amount of trainer cards, more than enough energy to work with, and yeah, we can just save that and keep going. So these two you can talk to, they were... Yeah, nearly drowning, which kind of sucks. Like, seriously, that's a terrible thing. That'd be a terrible way to go as well, honest to God. But yeah, we, we've saved them. And then you show up. Yeah, because we beat out stuff. He drops some cards, heck yeah. So we can get a Legends pack. We get more boosters. More boosters means more awesome cards, especially when it's Legends. Because we get Flareon! Oh, Flareon is cool, it looks so fucking awesome in this game. Seriously, one of my favourite cards from the original to play with because it was the cornerstone of my Royal Flare deck. And yeah, it does the same thing as it always did, but it's an awesome card nonetheless. Uh, Sandslash, Sandslash could be cool. Got a Rhydon, which is nice because I have a lot of Rhyhorn, so that works. Uh, yeah, pretty good. And of course he will share stuff, which is fine. Uh, he should have given us a minicom message, but I guess not for some reason. Maybe we'll get one when he comes out here, but I don't understand. I don't understand why he's not giving us a minicom message about Great Rocket 3, because yeah, there it is. Like, you're late, dude. I've already fought him. However, it's not the only thing we've got, because apparently Dr. Mason's got new deck analysis stuff to see. Uh, dealing with status and crap. Useful heal energy, that's how you do it. And yes, he does that, so delete that. I can delete the other two as well because I don't need them anymore, but I'll read this one first. Because yeah, we, we already know this, but too bad. Grass and Fire, he has Executor, it hurts. We know, it's not that big a deal. If you can kill it before it happens to kill you, then you're golden, right? But anyway, in here is that song again, and you know when that song comes up, shit's getting real, because Amakuni is over here. So yeah, who is you, we know, Amakuni, blah blah blah, there's no cards left, alright, oh dear, there's no cards right, we need, to, we need to resolve this, and of course we resolve this with card pop, because that's what we do. This one, unlike the one that Ronald does, is fixed because you have to get the Himakuni card, which is just as freaky as it was before, and it's just as terrible as it was before. However, it has one use in this game. If you remember Dark Primate from the first video, it's kind of fitting actually that I got that now that I think about it, but if you remember Dark Primate, its attacks actually get more powerful when it's confused. So what you could do if you're feeling really ballsy is you could use this card when you evolve to Dark Primeape and then attack from there. The only other thing I can possibly think of using this card for would be to negate paralysis and yeah, but really then you're switching paralysis with confusion which is arguably worse. And even at that, if you're wanting to use a card to get rid of paralysis, use full heal. 
Or better yet, you switch. It's... It's a pointless card. <laughs> but we get to save our data when we do that. Yeah, it's totally... Dude! Zabdos, really? That's like... No! I'm not allowed to get Zabdos, so that's just like... Rubbing it in my face right there. Seriously. Anyway, uh, Great Rocket 2 is indeed a villain, obviously. You got a problem. Uh, trade cards. Da 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 da. He's looking for the Flareon, which we just got. And he would trade me out for it, you know? I kind of don't want to at the moment. I'll come back and do this one later, but Meowth is not really that good anyway, so whatever. Yeah, we know that. Let's go and kick his ass, because we can. He's got all of these dudes in Trapped, which really sucks, because that basically means that they can't play, and that's that. Anyway, yep, foolishness, blah. He uses the exact same deck as he did before, so he hasn't really gotten stronger in the slightest. At least I'm pretty sure he's got exactly the same deck as before. I don't remember seeing anything different in this. And we have a slightly more powerful deck than we had before, so... You know, it's it's all uphill for him. In theory. Although when I only start with a single Jatini, that's not particularly helpful. Kind of really need to go first here. And I don't, so... If he's got enough energy to... Thank God he put a grass energy on that. Okay, he's going to be able to stall me for quite a while. But because he put a grass energy on that and not a fire, he won't be able to hit me next turn with... Uh, stuff. So I'm kind of happy for that. Anyway, try to, try to wait a Rapidash and I will get myself... Diglett, I guess. Um, I could get a Diglett, or I could get Machop, or even Hitmonchan. Actually, Hitmonchan is a lot more endurance, so we'll put him down. And I can't actually damage him this turn, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And now it begins. If he gets that third energy attached, then I could be in a bit of trouble. But I can still evolve to Dragonair as well, so I'm I'm okay. I'm not okay, he's gonna one hit kill me here. Oh my dear no, no, he's not gonna one hit kill me because he didn't attach the right energy type, but man he uses regular and dark charmeleon. That's kinda of funny actually. <laughs> I didn't realise he did that. But yeah, that's that's surprising. I didn't know that. Hmm. Oh, if, if I did, then I kind of forgot. But oh well. Uh, come on, please get one heads. Oh, you son of a bitch. Why, why, why must I get no heads with this? Because now I'm dead. I'm, I'm flat out dead. There's, there's not much I can really do. Like, I can start attaching to Hitmonchan, I suppose. And I'm going to have to. I could have attached and hyperbeamed, but I don't think it really... You troll! You absolute troll! <laughs> I was gonna say, I wouldn't, didn't think it would make much difference. And you know what? I'm glad I didn't, because now that I got those two heads, I can kill it with a jab next turn. And that's good. Because that Charmeleon is a massive threat, man. Really, it's, it's a big danger to have that against me. And now I have enough that I can special punch next turn. So, good for me. Good for me. Oh, that Tangler though. Uh, that Tangler has got paralysis on its side, and I don't like that because it's got paralysis on its side, but it didn't paralyze this time. Kinda lucky that it didn't paralyze this time, I'm not gonna lie. So, anyhow, Bill drawing into Bill, that totally never happened before. What the hell are you talking about? Again, another Jatini, which is good. And I can special punch for 40. Maybe I should have, um, well, there you go. Special punch has got a new animation too, but maybe I should have put the energy on Dratini. Because if I get Stun Spore, then I'm going to want to use the full, yeah, I'm going to want to use the full heal energy. Which means I kind of just wasted my attachment last turn. Because I could have killed it anyway with a jab and special punch combo. 
Too bad, too bad. It's fine. I can I can use that energy to retreat if I have to. Really, the most important thing here is just keeping on getting the damage out so that I can win this game, to be honest. Because this thing, oh, this, this, this is potentially very damaging. Because, yeah, that's gonna kill me in a couple of hits, and I don't have Dragonair anymore, so Dragonite, you're kind of useless. Just putting that out there. If only I still had that plus power, could have one hit killed him and that would have been awesome. And he's got that magma too, wow, this this is not an easy situation to be in because any one of his Pokemon could do a lot of damage from here. And well, I've got energy surge, so I guess I can get a fighting energy out, charge up the chop so I've still got some good damage going. But really, this... This is a painful situation to be in, because Hitmonchan's falling very soon. Because if he puts another Grass Energy on this... Then why did he send it out? Maybe he has no Fire Energy as well, so yeah, if he has no energy whatsoever, then it doesn't matter what he'd send out, but... Huh, that's, that's interesting. Now I get some more damage off, and maybe I can win this before he gets more energy out? Yeah, it looks like I might do. And I have all three of my... This is the terrible thing with Professor Oak. I have all three of them in my hand now. That And when as soon as I use one, that's, that's it. It's gone. It's, it's really dumb how that works, but... Hey, Machamp, how are you doing? I don't think I'm going to require your services in this game, somehow. Although maybe I will, because that Oddish is... Wow, he's still not got any energy. I would actually call that kind of unlucky, to be completely honest. <laughs> eh, whatever. The joke. Go ahead and discard the two non-fighting energies there, and I will hit for 50, get the one-hit kill. Hopefully get an energy so that I can machamp it up next turn. No, nope, but that's fine, because I should be able to Professor Oak into an energy. Here is another really good card if you're using Team Rocket Pokemon. It's another reason why they're very good, is because you can get evolutions for Team Rocket Pokemon out with it, and it's just really good. You're stupid, why did you put... <laughs> I will never understand this game. Maybe... The only thing that I can think of that would have made that sort of viable is if he only drew that fire energy this turn and didn't know what to put out. I I could see that being viable, but that's a that still seems like a really bad misplay. Maybe it's just me, but it seems like that was a really really bad misplay to put out Oddish instead of Magma. Oh well. I ain't gonna complain, yo, because that just made for a really freaking easy game. I can't believe I just said that as well. Complain, yo, but whatever. Beat them again, we get ourselves another set of packs of the same thing, and that gets us a Jinx, which is a really, really crap Jinx, too. It's interesting in the sense that it uses water energy instead of psychic, so it's a psychic card for water decks. Which is sort of interesting, but Water has no fear of Psychic anyway, so it's kind of bad. And it's very similar to the Onyx, actually, which, you know, did 10 and 20, the Paralysis on its first thing. It, it stops the opponent retreating on its second. This is slightly better, because it puts them to sleep. But this has only got 50 HP, so it's it still sucks. Uh, Dark Muck, on the other hand, does not suck. This is still one of the better Dark Pokemon, in my opinion, because the opponent has to pay extra energy to retreat, and that's a lot more as well. That means uh, any normal, like, stage 2 that takes 2 retreat to normally go, takes 4. Same as a Snorlax. A Snorlax would take 6 energy to retreat. It's ridiculous. And then 20 damage for 2 grass plus auto poison. That works very well with its power because then they can't retreat very easily, so the poison is very difficult to remove. So it's good. The only problem is it has to be the active Pokemon to get the retreating thing to work, but it's still, still good. 
Uh, this Squirtle basic 20 damage for two Colas. It's it's okay with the War Turtle that's um, Bite enabled. You know the one that just does uh, Withdraw and Bite, the standard base set one, because that also takes two Colas energy. So you could double Colas this for 20 and then hit for 40 next turn with Bite. Kind of useful. And everything else we've seen. So what are we going to get from this pack? We are going to get another pincer. That's that's good, I like that. Uh, this Lickitung, very low HP compared to the other one, but eh, its stomp is more powerful. Its lick has the same paralysis chance, but doesn't do damage, so it's worse. I don't think this is a great Lickitung, but it's maybe... Uh, it's debatable whether it's better or not. Depends on your deck, I think. If you need slightly more da damage out, then that might be better. And this coughing is different as well. It's uh, quite annoying, actually, because heads poison, turn heads confusion on that. It's it's fairly damaging for a coughing, because if you can keep getting heads of it, then there's lots of nasty stasis you can do. And that is painful to fight. So yeah, now that we've beaten them twice, we get the third rocket coin piece, which is amazing. You know, it's amazing that we've got three out of the four, because we can hopefully get the last one pretty damn soon. And that would be nice. Yeah, we know, we know. Only flies to island, we know. And once again, he's going to do the whole thing. See? And release everyone. Now, apparently we're going to have to fight him again on Great Rocket Island, but oh well, whatever. Gratitude must be given, and we're going to get the Fire Coin, which is friggin' Charmander, and, you know, Charmanders are cute and whatnot, so Fire Coin it is... I, I don't know what I'm going to use next time, I think I might use the Fire Coin and then save the, gra uh, the water one for later. But yes. That's how it goes. So yep, we saw a battle, blah blah blah, you can duel us later, blah blah blah, yep, 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 and fire indeed, yes, we will do that at some stage later, but not just now, because just now, we've done enough fighting for this one episode, it's fighting the same guy twice, I realise, that's, that's kind of just what you have to do in this game. The next one, spoiler alert, you've got to fight him twice as well, so that's just the way it goes. But anyway, this has been Game of Cow playing the Pokemon Train Card Game 2, and join us next time when I don't actually know exactly how I'm going to do everything with this, but... We've got the Psychic Club to do, we've got the Lightning Club to do, and I guess that's the only two which are remaining, so we might as well do that. Unless I get interrupted by something else, but I don't think there's anything else to do, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll take that on next time. So yeah, 